This video is going to be on hyponatremia and hypochloremia, which means there's a decreased concentration of sodium or chloride in blood. So the there are two main causes of hyponatremia and hypochloremia, um, and they are either moving it or losing it. So you're either moving uh, sodium and chloride or you're losing sodium and chloride from the body. So first I'll talk about moving it um, and then I'll go on to losing it later on in the video. So first of all, moving it, you could either have this with uroabdomen or rhabdomyolysis. So I'm going to first start off talking with uroabdomen and I'm going to draw here a blood vessel and the peritoneal cavity which is represented by this um, black box. Um, so with uroabdomen, essentially there's leakage of urine into the peritoneum. So now the peritoneum contains lots of yellow fluid. And that urine contains uh, higher concentrations of certain things compared to the blood. So everything that the kidney excretes, urea, creatinine, phosphorus, and potassium, all of those substances are at higher concentrations in urine compared to blood. Well, when those, those substances end up within the peritoneal cavity, they don't just stay there. They move down their concentration gradient and diffuse into the blood. So um, you'll see higher concentrations of those substances in blood with your abdomen. Now, the urine also contains uh, a lower concentration of some things relative to the blood. So the kidneys actually resorb and conserve sodium and chloride. So there's lots and lots of sodium chloride in blood relative to urine. So sodium and chloride move down their concentration gradient with uh, your abdomen and they can decrease in blood. So the expected um, serum or plasma changes include decreases in sodium and chloride and increases in urea, creatinine, phosphorus, and potassium. Okay, so now going to rhabdomyolysis. This, rhabdomyolysis is lysis of um, muscle. So, and not just, you know, one myocyte, but lots and lots of myocytes. So this is severe muscle injury and muscle cell death. So I'm again going to draw a blood vessel on the left. And uh, this time I'm going to draw a uh, muscle cell, which is again represented by a black uh, uh, square. Um, so the muscle contains lots of things uh, relative to blood. So it contains uh, two enzymes called creatinine kinase or CK and aspartate aminotransferase or AST. And it also contains lots of myoglobin. And relative to blood, it contains lots of phosphorus and potassium because those are intracellular ions. Um, the blood contains uh, lots of sodium, chloride, and calcium relative to within the myocyte cytoplasm. So again, all of these substances are found in muscle and blood. It's just I'm writing the higher concentrations um, where, where they are. Okay, so if there's um, massive muscle injury, there's lysis of the cell membrane, and then things leak out of that myocyte. So the CK, AST, myoglobin, phosphorus, and potassium all leak out of the muscle cell, so that increases within the blood. And sodium chloride and calcium go down their concentration gradient, so from blood and into that empty space that's left by the dead muscle. So with the um, serum or plasma changes, you'll expect to see decreases in sodium, chloride, and calcium, and increases in AST, CK, myoglobin, uh, phosphorus, and potassium. However, the myoglobin is really um, is readily excreted by the kidney. It has a very low renal threshold. So really, you'll see uh, red urine before you see red plasma. So this is called myoglobinuria. So now I'm going to go over to the lose it side. 
Um, and the three main locations that we can lose sodium and chloride include the gastrointestinal tract um, or uh, the renal uh, or urinary tract, but specifically the kidney, um, and then also cutaneous sites. And the cutaneous sites I'm not really going to discuss uh, in much detail because really you need a physical exam for that. You're not going to use ClinPath changes to look at that. So going back up to the gastrointestinal loss, um, sodium and chloride can be lost with vomiting, um, or it could be lost with diarrhea, or it doesn't have to necessarily be lost from the body. It could just be sequestered within the gastrointestinal tract. And then finally, this is kind of a, a less common cause of GI loss, but excessive salivation and then not um, swallowing or ingesting that saliva. So an example of that would be choke in a cow or a horse where there's excessive salivation, but they can't um, then ingest that saliva to uh, retain that sodium and chloride. So super, super common, and really you need uh, physical exam findings to diagnose that. As far as renal loss, we are talking about um, any cause of diuresis where there's an increased tubular flow rate. And with that increased tubular flow rate, there's then less time to resorb sodium and chloride. Um, it can also happen with ketonuria, and that's supposed to be ketonuria, not ketonuria. Um, and that's because ketones are negatively charged substances, and those negatively charged substances attract positively charged substances. Well, sodium is positively charged, so if there's lots of ketones in the in the ultrafiltrate, then they're going to attach to sodium and draw it out um, into the urine with the ketones. Um, and then another cause um, is tubular disease. So uh, the renal tubular cells are responsible for resorbing sodium and chloride, and they're really good at doing that. But if there's tubular disease, meaning that there's renal failure, then those um, uh, renal tubular cells don't resorb the sodium and chloride that it's supposed to, and it ends up um, getting washed away in the urine. And then finally, um, aldosterone. Aldosterone normally acts to resorb sodium chloride in water. So if there's less aldosterone, then there's less resorption of sodium chloride in water. And we see this occurring with animals that have hypoadrenocorticism, which is also known as Addison's disease. And then as far as cutaneous loss, um, excessive sweating, uh, excess is excessive, not your day-to-day -day sweating, and then burns. So that's pretty much it, uh, hyponatremia and hypochloremia. Um, it can move into the abdominal cavity with your abdomen. It can move into a dead space with rhabdomyolysis, and it can be lost by the, into the gastrointestinal tract um, via the kidneys or via a cutaneous route.